Hey, it's Wizard Fu with another game development update. Hey, are you excited? I kind of am. And I'm excited because I fixed so many dang of the glitches. Oh, I'm so stoked. Look at this. It's so glorious. First of all, let's um let's just move around at normal speed. And we got Jib following us. And if you remember, Jib used to leave a pink streak every once in a while in um, all sorts of angles. And even the fire, just sitting here right by the fire that's supposed to be nice and orange color, but it would also leave these pink dots every once in a while. Of course, they're pink because the background color is all pink. So that's just in order to show that uh, when whenever there is some, a pink dot anywhere, that is some kind of glitch where it's not showing um what it should be you know except for those little pink dots that are floating around that look like they're part of the clouds but anyways the bright pink dots those are what those are what we're trying to get rid of let's look at some um some videos from when i was trying to fix this this took forever to fix this bug but i had recorded so many screen uh what do you call those screen casts i just recorded my screen a bunch of times trying to figure it out so I can step through frame by frame and get a good look at what it is. Let's look at look at the issue in a little bit here, more more a little more detail. Look at Jib right here. I'm gonna just advance forward frame by frame, and um, this is of course after I fixed another bug before where it wasn't quite syncing up the uh, the blue the blue rectangles with the actual frame rate. So now it's all synced up. I could actually step through all this. And, and actually see exactly what's going on frame by frame. Check it out right there. We go from this frame to that frame and Jib leaves behind a chunk of that. A chunk of that pillar is just missing all of a sudden. And watch this, we keep going and Jib starts carving his way through the ground leaving behind a pink trail of what? Of nothingness, of the void, the pink void. So, this was this had me stymied for quite some time. It took me all day. Just kept on recording videos and trying to dial in what could what could be what could possibly be this issue. Look how look how simple. Like oh, I even did this. I had I made it so I took away Jib at one point, and I was like, let's just have Rock right next to the fire because the fire was doing it really consistently. I thought it had something to do with repainting entities because when Jib or when Rock gets really close to this flame, actually when the their two intersect. Um, that's when the pink starts happening and if I would walk rock over to the left where his his bounding box wasn't at all touching the uh, the flames bounding box then we wouldn't see the issue at all so that that was a huge clue something was wrong with the repaints right and I was thinking maybe it's because rocks repainting one tick and the fire is repainting another tick or perhaps they're both repainting in that same tick and something's going on wrong there where they're not quite overlapping correctly and so that's why I drew this visualization this is like a I coded this up where it basically puts a pink or purplish rectangle around anything that rock redraws and then a greenish rectangle around anything that the the fire redraws so that also I didn't solve the problem from just doing that but it was all leading towards clues until finally, in the end of the day, I was like, "Okay, let's just approach this problem um, from a from a, a purely rational standpoint." I actually didn't even code any of this. I sat outside and thought. I just looked at the ocean for a while, and the solution came to me. But basically, um, this was all it took was adding this one line of code right here. This is where it's repainting entities. It's basically looping over all the entities that are touching. Uh, another entity's bounding box and then seeing if they need to be painted. If they need to be painted is just if their bounding boxes actually touch each other because we're getting all these EIDs uh, for these from the um, render grid. The render grid is not exact but it's a quick way to look up entities at a specific position. So uh, that's why we need to check actually if their bounding boxes do intersect and all I was doing was accidentally Adding this to the repaint is, even if it didn't need to be painted, this is what the code used to look like before, and that's what caused all those issues. In fact, we could even, sh let's see, get the issue back, huh? No, I don't want to get the issue back. I t I'm done with you, issue! Yeah, so that's, that's all it was, that one line of code. 
Wish all bugs were were that easy. So um, so that's that. And then I came up with another uh, a really cool way to speed up the um, the movement. So um, as the player is moving around the screen and and, and encountering new uh, areas and stuff like that, what I think I just did recompile the bug back in. All right, let's see with the bug. Fine, fine. So we got okay, yeah. Is it doing it? Why is it just not doing it now? Well, anyways. Um, anyways, so the uh, the game actually used to the, the voxel engine itself used to slow down quite a bit whenever whenever I was uh, going to new areas because it always has to re-decide which entities are on screen and not or not. Um, and I sped that up quite quite dramatically instead of having to read list every single entity that is uh, um, on the screen, which is what this used to do right here. It used to loop over the entire render grid for the entire screen and, and recalculate all the entities that need to be on screen, every single tick. And that uh, that wasn't um, that wasn't that efficient. So the, what this does, it basically creates a, um, gets two boxes, the current on screen box and the last on screen box, and then computes the difference between them on the x-axis only and then adds anything on that so if uh, the rectangles were overlaid they would basically just have one rectangle be slightly different than the other which means so uh, we're just taking that chunk of space that's different now and adding those ids to the list of on-screen ids and then after that we go and erase any ids that are not on screen so this bit of code is a little more complicated it's a little more complex than this bit of code, but it's much more efficient. It's a lot faster. And there's ways like I think I can speed this up a little bit even more. In fact, the biggest way would be to simplify that so that it was just two more of these diff rectangles um, instead of another loop over all the on-screen ids. So uh, that was a huge performance boost. And check it out, I got one more really tight thing happened. Um, there used to be this weird glitch where it, every once in a while I would hiccup um, it would hiccup the, uh, so basically I would just run around and about every eight seconds or so, or like every six seconds or something like that, there would be a noticeable hiccup where it would, one of the frames would take 30 to 70 milliseconds, something, something big enough to, for you to notice like, whoa, that just was just a, definitely a hiccup there. And it would happen consistently every single time I ever ran the game and I finally figured out what the hell it was. So let's check this out. This is the trace I did of, while profiling. And I basically just zoomed in on this one little chunk of time um, where it looked different than the others. And then the, you can see this chunk happens again right here in this region and maybe right here too. It's consistent. It's like every so off. That's what's that, 20? This is about 25. So that's about, yeah, four seconds right there. So all it was was it's calling GLFW's poll events. And look how big that is, 73 milliseconds. A tick should be 3 milliseconds or less. No, sorry, uh, a tick should be 15 milliseconds or less. So anyways, that was, this is taking up like, you know, 5 or 6 ticks worth of time. And all all this does is just mucking about in, in Mac's um, whole inputting system. And then finally doing this Objective-C message send and mock message wait and all that. And, and uh, so that basically the, the core of the problem here was GLFW's pull events which I was using the latest stable version of GLFW 3.2.1 and it had this issue and I found out online that other people had that issue too. In fact, is this it? Yeah, this is the, the I found this on uh, GLFW's uh, GitHub page and somebody ha had said, you know, it actually got real detailed and showed them this happening for them. And uh, all I had to do was upgrade GLFW and this whole issue went away. So thanks to the GLFW team, Version 3.3 .3 is looking really good. It's got some great bug fixes. In fact, I wouldn't even use 3.2.1 if you're on Mac. Definitely go to 3.3. Just get up their master build, and their master, and uh, just you know use that. Uh, but anyway, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope maybe this was of some value to you. We'll talk to you later.